What's up, everybody? We made it a couple minutes late, but I've got some new speakers, which is cool. So I can actually hear stuff now. It used to just come out of my laptop that's plugged in or my widescreen. Also, some new merch that we're doing some photos of today. It's a new tie-dye look with a big LYK on the front, which is pretty cool. Uh, you guys can check that out on the merch site. But that's not all that's new today because we have a new case that we're talking about. And one of the reasons I came across this case is I went on News Nation, I don't know, an hour ago to talk about it because they asked me about it and they had some questions. I didn't know a lot about it. So I did a bit of a deep dive and holy cow, this case. Let me know in the comments if you guys have been following this case. The Suzanne Morphew disappearance from 2020. I think it's Mother's Day 2020. And today I'm going to give you a little bit of a background. And we're going to hit the wild things that have happened legally in this case. And what happens from here as her body has finally been found three years plus after her disappearance. Um, so hit the like button, subscribe to the page if you haven't already, if you're new here from this case. If you've been following this case, I really want to know what you think about it. Um, let me know that in the comments because it's wild. Okay, a lot of you are saying you're new to this case. Well, buckle up. Um, and I don't say that lightly as there are a lot of wild cases with wild things going on here that we cover. A bunch of people saying following this case since day one. Yes, 5, 10, 20. So happy they found her remains. Okay, good. So we have some people in here that have been following this case. I've got a couple short like news clips we're going to watch to give us some insight. We're going to hear statements from her family. We're going to read motions to dismiss. Um, so we've got a lot to hit here in a short amount of time. Because right after this video, we're going to automatically redirect into me reacting to and breaking down Ben Chu's interview discussing the eight passengers case that a lot of you asked about in yesterday's live. Okay, so mom of two, um, married woman, disappears day after Mother's Day. And we're not positive where she went, but evidence seems to point to the fact that she went on some sort of bike ride. Um, lives in Colorado. I'm getting confused now. Colorado, Utah. I'm pretty sure it's Colorado. Um, lives in Colorado. And we come to find out that her and her husband were a bit estranged, at least from her point of view, talking to friends and text messages to the husband. And she had a secret affair going on. So the initial two suspects when she disappeared were the secret lover and the husband, which is not uncommon. And there were some sketchy facts that would potentially point the finger at both of them. And so first to talk about the secret lover, um, sketchy about him. He deleted all of his social media, basically didn't tell anybody that they were having an affair, kind of lied about it, unsure exactly how that went, but he had a good excuse for it because he was trying to protect her reputation and he was trying to protect his family. And he had a rock solid alibi that absolutely checked out different state at the same time. So he was kind of dismissed as a suspect, um, very quickly. Then we come to her husband. And I don't know how whether I want to start with the positive or the negative. So let me start with, got to run away here, here. Um, let me start with the negative, meaning the evidence they had against him. This guy made so many outlandish, contradictory, sketchy statements about what he was doing that day and before. Seems like untrue statements, at least by the text messages from his wife about their marriage. He said it was perfect and happy and they had a great marriage and great family. Multiple people came out and said that's not true and had text messages from the wife saying he's Jekyll and Hyde. Um, he's dangerous. She's going to leave him. It's all about money with him. And even a text message to him that said, we're done. I don't care what you're, you're doing now or been doing for years. It's over. And text messages that that has almost happened um, before. Yeah, there's a 48 hours episode on it, somebody said. Okay, so we can check that out. Um, so basically trying to say they had a perfect relationship. Clearly they didn't. Um, law enforcement finds out about the affair, tells the husband he said he didn't know about the affair, but about as good of a motive as you can have, right? The day before this happens, she basically says it's over. He's controlling, things like that, according to some of her other text messages. Um, 
Then they've got movement. They've got cell phone data. They've got cameras. They've got where his car went. Um, and all of it is sketchy. And he just gave excuses like he was shooting squirrels around his house, but there was no evidence of that. And it seems like a lot of things law enforcement could port, point to and say, that's not true or that's not consistent. Um, yeah, the husband's name is Barry. Yes. And so just making him look very sketchy from the jump saying he was there, he went here and he did a left turn and they ended up finding her bike helmet there, but they could never find her remains. So then we flip to some of the positive stuff that maybe proves he didn't do it. Um, because this was not an ironclad case, partially because, oh wait, there were some other things. So there's a lot of firearms, um, and knives and stuff in the house that, you know, he has the opportunity. If he wanted to do something like this, he could. And they even found in his washing machine some evidence that he was using tranquilizer, I don't know, stuff to put on bullets or to put on darts or whatever. And he says that he uses it to shoot deer and cut off their antlers and sell their antlers, which he agreed was illegal. Um, but that's what it was used for and that he didn't use it on her. But obviously law enforcement suspected that he used it on his wife. So then we go to some of the cell phone and car. Oh, and then he also turned his cell phone on airplane mode so they couldn't see where he was going. And there's an unaccounted for period of time, all sorts of stuff like that. Right. And there's more, right? There's more. Um, but then on the other side, some of his cell phone and car data actually prove he wasn't around. Um, and there were things that he was doing, going to job sites and talking to people that do kind of indicate he didn't do it or wouldn't have done it if, or wouldn't have done those things if he had committed the crime. Um, and he left right away, put up a reward, which a lot of people were saying Murdoch didn't push hard enough for that $100,000, then $200,000. His daughters have basically been on his side for the majority of this investigation. Um, and one of the people that took over his room said they smelled cleaning material or chlorine. So maybe he was cleaning stuff, bleaching stuff, whatever. He had shovels because of his job site. Um, so there was a lot of, you know, kind of contradictory evidence could have pointed to him, might not have pointed to him, but most of his inconsistencies and I'll say alleged lies, I think are what pointed law enforcement to him. Um, for the most part. So they get a judge on the case. Judge has to eventually disqualify himself because of the relationships he has with lawyers on the case. And they get another judge on the case. They end up finding probable cause to charge the husband with a first degree M and also tampering with evidence and some other things. But even though the judge said the state had probable cause, they basically were saying, I'm only finding that because I'm reading this evidence in the light most favorable to the state. But that this is a weak case, basically, is what the judge said at the time. State continues to go forward. He does get a bail a bail set. He posts bail. He has an ankle monitor and he's out during this, hires you know high-powered lawyers um, for all intents and purposes. And they continue to fight the case saying that it is weak. So here's one of the major first legal issues. Throughout the case, the law enforcement in the state made so many mistakes, failed to play by the rules, did not turn over evidence in a timely manner as they should have. The judge openly reprimanded them. He didn't sanction them or find that it was on purpose, but it was egregiously reckless and negligent the way that they were handling the case, including exculpatory or potentially exculpatory evidence, which was from a DNA swab inside the victim's car that was later connected to an unnamed person who matches the description and DNA match at least partially with three other crimes of a, of an S a nature. For those of you that know what that means. So you have a predator potentially whose DNA matched the inside of the car that she has no other connection with that. They didn't turn over to the defense, at least in a timely manner. That was obviously potentially exculpatory. So the judge throughout the litigation of this case ends up striking I believe it was 11, 12, or 13, depending on the documents you read, different witnesses from the state, including experts. So literally putting handcuffs on the state, making this case almost impossible to prosecute from their point of view. So just weeks, I believe, or days before this case was supposed to go to trial. So it basically took them a year to charge him. And then a year after they charged him, basically, give or take, right before it was supposed to go to trial, the state filed this motion that we're going to look at real quick. We're not going to read the whole thing, but we are going to read part of it.
On May 6, 2021, the defendant was brought before the court on charges, including this, of his wife. To date, he remains, the remains have not been found. Okay, so this was filed um, back in 2022. This was April 19, 2022. Okay, so this is almost a year ago, and we're going to bring us up to date here. Um, they found probable cause. Fence entered plea of not guilty. Throughout the pendency of the case, people in law enforcement have been unrelenting in our search for Ms. Morphew. For some time, a single location has been the target of the ongoing investigation. For the reasons expressed below, the people have a good faith reason to believe that further investigation to this matter is essential to answering the most consequential question presented in this case. As the search cannot be accomplished in the coming weeks due to the weather and snowpack conditions, the people respectfully ask this court to dismiss the current indictment against the defendant without prejudice. So they're basically saying, without the body, we don't think we can do it. And they said, but we think we're close to finding the body, and they've honed in on a general um, area. So how did they lock in on a general area? Well, number one, they have his cell phone data. Number two, they have his vehicle data. So they should be able to have a general area as to where he was. Now they do say there are some hours missing between that data, but generally they should kind of know. And they searched those areas and they said the snow and the ground and the conditions make it hard to find the body. Okay, I agree with that, except for the fact that it's been two years. By April of 2022, they've had two years and, you know, the weather and all of the cycles of life happened every year, yet they're saying now they have to dismiss it because they can't search for the body where they think it is because of the snow. Interesting. She was missing for three years, somebody asked. Ask your questions because you're going to help me give you things I forgot. So. They talk about the authority they have to dismiss, and I want to focus in on this part here where it says effect of dismissal without prejudice or null pros is what we call this null, null pros aquai, but we just call it null pros. It's a formal declaration of record by the prosecutor that the government will not prosecute the current case further. It is a discharge without an acquittal, and it is not a bar to subsequent prosecution for the same crimes. It is not a final disposition in a criminal case. It leaves the matter in the same condition as before the charges were filed. Thus, the indictment against the defendant would function as a nullity upon its dismissal without prejudice. So that means they can dismiss this case back in April of 2022, but they can refile charges and go through the probable cause process again and see if they are going to prosecute the husband for this crime if they find things specifically because they say we need the body. As Taylor Swift said, no body, no crime. And that's a real thing. It's very hard to prove a crime. It's not impossible, as we saw with Murdoch. Not impossible. Sorry, with the murder weapon and, and Murdoch. But it's not impossible, as we've seen in other cases. The weapon and the crime are the two most important things that we need. But you can prove the case without it. It doesn't preclude prosecutors from bringing charges. However, we've seen many cases where it's very difficult and almost impossible to prove without the body. And that's basically where they were. Now, I think we have to ask the question, nobody forced them to file these charges. They knew they didn't have the body in 2021 when they filed the charges, but they still decided to file the charges. So that's pretty rough. So they also say, how they just basically talk over and over again, how if we had the body, we think we'd do better. They also say the interests of the public and the defendant are further by dismissal. So somewhat doing the right thing. But in my opinion, I think if they would have asked for another continuance in this trial, the defense was continuously asking for the court to dismiss this case because of all the struck witnesses, all the problems that they had had. So I think the court was going to dismiss the case anyways, but this allowed them to A, save face a little bit, and B, do it without prejudice so they could bring it in the future if they wanted to. So now let's hear a little news clip back a year ago about when these charges were dismissed and some details here in this video that we'll react to. The murder case against Barry Morphew has been dismissed. Now, this centers around the disappearance of Morphew's wife, Suzanne, who vanished on a bike ride on Mother's Day in 2020. Her body has never been found. And minutes ago, Morphew's lawyer spoke at a press conference criticizing how the prosecution handled this case. We were going to get Mr. Morphew acquitted, rightly, after a trial that we believed we were going to have to have. 
But all this also, yeah, it's a good point. Uh, by filing this dismissal without prejudice, they don't allow the defense to try the case when the defense may have the upper hand. So when you feel like you're going to lose, you just dismiss the charges without prejudice, then you can file them again later if you find more evidence and it's better. Seems unfair, right? And this is why sometimes you want to demand speedy trial. Because if he would have demanded speedy trial and they would have done this, then it would be without or outside the speedy trial period. Because they can't do this if the defense demands speedy trial. They can't dismiss without prejudice and then bring the charges again later. So that's why it's such an important tool. But our system is set up to where it's almost impossible for a defendant to be ready in six months. As we've seen with Koberger, we're learning a lot. And everybody here is learning a lot. As we go through these cases, the principles we understand as lawyers that we have to play within, but the general public sometimes thinks six months is plenty of time. But it's not. And when you waive it, you open yourself up to something like this as a defendant, which regardless of what we feel about this guy, right? Regardless of whether or not the general public thinks this guy's guilty, which side note, the 130 page probable cause affidavit that made him look like an absolute scumbag and talked about all sorts of problems they were having in their marriage, personal stuff, makes him look horrible talking about his lies. The judge said is the kind of most in-depth and longest PC affidavit he's seen in 30 years as a lawyer practicing criminal defense and being a judge, number one. And number two, they granted a change of venue from this small town because it was so bad and there was so much media attention on it that even witnesses that may have been witnesses for the defense now think the defendant is guilty based on this probable cause affidavit and the media coverage. So that's how bad it all was at the beginning. But even the prosecutors would admit at this point, if they were going to go to trial within this week, they were probably going to lose. That's why they dismissed it without prejudice. Sudden now today, in the face of the fact that they have committed so much misconduct, they decided to dismiss the case claiming that there is a body that they're close to finding up in the mountains that it, they're snow covered by uh, nearby where Mr. Morphy's house was. Rick Salinger in the CBS4 newsroom. Rick, this does not necessarily mean the Morphy's... So that was his lawyer. And again, that is what they kind of said. Mountains tough area, whatever. We're going to keep all this in mind as we now have the benefit of hindsight because we know what happened last week and was confirmed this week. In the clear, right? That is correct, Dominic. The trial was set to begin with jury selection next week, but the prosecution figured it may not win at this time, so it withdrew the charges for now in hopes of coming up with more evidence and refiling later. Barry Morphew was charged with first-degree murder and the death of his wife, but appeared to have the continuing support of their daughters. Suzanne Morphew disappeared on Mother's Day 2020. Her body has not been found. Now prosecutors filed a motion stating further investigation into this matter is essential to answering the most consequential question presented by this case. What they made clear is they need to find the body or more evidence to move ahead with it. That's frustrating to me too, right? You charge this guy, you throw him in prison, you ruin his life basically with this probable cause affidavit, you put an ankle, ankle monitor on him, nobody's going to hire him, and you don't even think you have enough to prosecute him without the body. Listen, you can prosecute cases without the body. Maybe he did it. So, you know, whatever. I get it. However, if you don't even think you have enough to prosecute this case as the prosecutor, it's a miscarriage of justice. The case writing, as his search cannot be accomplished in the coming weeks due to weather and snowpack conditions, the people respectfully ask his court to dismiss the current indictment. To make matters more difficult for prosecutor Mark Hurlburt, the judge had thrown out most of their expert witnesses due to sanctions imposed by the judge for failing to turn over all discovery evidence in a timely manner. Raj Chohan is a legal analyst for CBS4. If they can develop some DNA evidence, if they can develop some evidence that gives them a cause of death, if they can find some corroborating information that attaches Barry Morphew to the crime, that's certainly going to be very helpful. Morphew had made. So there we go. You heard it from the legal analyst himself. If they can find corroborating evidence about where the body is, the cause of death, that could be very important. Well, guess what? They found the body last week. And they identified it as Suzanne Morphew. More on that in a little bit. So, case is dismissed. Um, Barry's lawyers accuse the prosecutors of misconduct. Judge doesn't go as far as to say that they're going to be sanctioned. However, I see people in the chat, which is why I love people that have been following this case from day one, coming and joining us. He filed a civil lawsuit against law enforcement and prosecutors for violating his civil rights and basically ruining his life to the tune of $15 million. And 
one of the other things, you know, tracking with Murdoch, where I said, you know, the the reward that a lot of people said they wished he would have done. They also, on what case were we just listening to? Oh, this is to come in the interview that's going to directly follow this with Ben Chu. The comments he makes about whether or not a suspect talks to police without a lawyer and whether or not it makes them look more suspect if they get a lawyer and keep quiet. More on that later. Most people in the chat think innocent people talk to the cops and explain themselves. Well, that wasn't true in Murdoch who got convicted. And this guy also gave so many statements to so many different people, which they use the inconsistencies against him. And a big question of Murdoch, why lie? Especially about the most important thing. And I think a similar question would have been asked in this case if it would have gone to trial. And Jennifer says, if a guilty person would do that, it's unhinged. Well, it happens. Frankly, when I think back to some of my clients, some of the ones that did it are the ones that try to talk themselves out of it the most, talking to police before calling us. Not always, but happens a lot. All right, so let's hear from Barry himself and his daughters and hear a little bit about their $15 million lawsuit. And again, this is him speaking out while he knows further charges could come against him. But let's see what he has to say about it. We'll leave it on one, two, five speed. We might bump it up. More for you. The Colorado mother vanished on Mother's Day three years ago. Her husband Barry has been charged with murder, had been charged with murder, but he's now suing prosecutors after they dropped all charges last year. Now, Reshef has an exclusive interview with Morphew and his daughters. Good morning, Ariel. Good morning to you guys. Barry Morphew says his life is ruined. That $15 million civil suit accuses prosecutors and law enforcement of lying and withholding evidence, focusing only on Barry Morphew and humiliating him. But authorities tell us they didn't drop the charges because they thought Barry was innocent. They felt they didn't have enough evidence to convict without Suzanne's body. This morning, demands for justice for Suzanne Morphew. Three years after, the Colorado mom mysteriously vanished on Mother's Day in 2020. Authorities believe she is dead, her body never found, now officially classified a cold case. Somebody um, in this community needs to keep her name out there. Suzanne's husband, Barry, initially charged with first-degree murder and tampering with evidence, but those charges dropped just before his trial. Now Barry and his daughters, Macy and Mallory, are speaking exclusively to ABC News, claiming his life has been ruined by false accusations. What have these last three? I mean, I got to be honest. If the accusations are actually false and the prosecutors were doing it, it's a 100% slam dunk that it ruined his life. To be charged with something like this, if they knew it wasn't him or they had the DNA of the other guy and totally dismiss it and didn't even investigate it. However, it is difficult to go forward on these kinds of cases if there is probable cause. And we've talked about this before and I've actually, we've handled cases like this where somebody was wrongfully arrested and it was so bad that we did win a civil lawsuit. But a lot of times, I mean, even if we go to trial and we win or if we prove somebody's innocent and the charges get dropped, a lot of times there is no civil suit because the prosecutors did have enough to at least believe by probable cause that they could make this arrest and charge. Here has been like for you. Very, very sad. Very confusing. Just so traumatic. Like literally our worst nightmare. <laughs> Did you have anything to do with the disappearance of your wife? Yeah, EB said if the accusations are true, then yeah, sure. It's going to be really hard for him to win a civil suit. EB said, yeah, for sure. And I'm going to get to some more questions. Uh, we'll take some questions after this video because it's been a while since I took a couple. <laughs> Absolutely not. It's very hurtful to lose your reputation and your integrity. Barry filing a $15 million civil suit against prosecutors, the sheriff, and several investigators. So I know that $15 million is a huge number, but I don't think that in my mind, that covers any of the damage that's happened to Barry and the girls. I know he's innocent. And if they would just look for Suzanne outside of where they hypothesize Barry could have possibly. This is his criminal defense lawyer. They should look other places than they think it is based on where Barry is. Maybe they'll find him. Buried her remains. They could find her. His daughter's standing by him. You never had a shred of doubt once you heard the evidence from law enforcement against your dad. I've never had a shred of doubt. Not one. Prosecutors say at the time they believed that they were close to finding Suzanne's body and dropped those charges against Barry, hoping for additional evidence. Authorities tell ABC News they still believe Barry Morphew could be involved in his wife's disappearance and aren't ruling out future charges. Law enforcement, the DAs, believed that they had their guy, and they believe that there's a mountain of evidence against you. There's just not Suzanne's body. They're wrong. They're, they've got tunnel vision, and they looked at one person, and they've got too much pride to say they're wrong and look somewhere else. These charges were dropped without prejudice, which means if authorities feel like there's more evidence, they could charge you again. 
Do you live with fear of that? Well, I was innocent the first time they arrested me, so I'm sure it's possible. But I don't have anything to worry about. I've done nothing wrong. Was there any indication before she disappeared that something was amiss? No. Did you observe any fights, arguments, disagreements between your mom and your dad that concerned you before? No. Prosecutors offering texts which appear to show a strange... I mean, that's also going to be important evidence either. I see some people saying some things about the daughters. Regardless, if they're going to testify and say that and say that their marriage was happy and their family was happy and fine, that's going to be pretty important evidence, I think. I mean, text messages from Suzanne's phone are also going to be very important. And obviously she was having an affair. So there's going to be some things that contradict that, but that's still better than just Barry saying it himself. I'll say if you're presenting a case for the defense. Marriage. Suzanne referring to Barry as Jekyll and Hyde. Here we go. And just before she disappeared, telling Barry, I'm done. Suzanne confiding in a friend. Macy and I had a very tough talk yesterday. She's weary of the tension here. She knows how he is toward me and almost begged me to divorce him. He's still pulling Mal in. But Barry and his daughters deny the marriage was in trouble. We had a wonderful life, a wonderful marriage. She was just so loving and giving and such a good mother. Before her disappearance. Yeah, and people are saying a lot of things about like he voted for her and he had affairs. I haven't read every single thing on the case. There was some absolutely some things talking about things he was doing. I know after the fact and weird things he was searching on his phone that would be damning um, in the probable cause affidavit, but I haven't seen every single thing on this. Um, the first time I've ever heard about this case was today. So I was playing catch up. And Suzanne fighting cancer. And I know that she was going through chemotherapy for the last couple of years before her disappearance. And I know she was going through some hard things and made some some uh, bad decisions. What kind of bad decisions? She was um, she was really having trouble with the chemotherapy and the drugs. Investigators also say she was involved with someone else. When you found out that Suzanne was having an affair, what was your first thought? My heart was broke. My heart was broken. I didn't believe it. What's been the hardest part? Just not having mom. Yeah. Not knowing. It's really difficult, especially because of the lack of closure we have. And Barry Morphew has moved out of Colorado because he says the public and media scrutiny has been too much on him and his daughters. The chafing. All right. So actually, I'm going to finish up here with the end of this and then get to the questions because I looked through some of the questions and they're going to be better answered at the very end. So he's filed that lawsuit. That was months ago. Again, maybe he assumes at this point they're not going to find the body. I don't know. I would think after three years, it would be unlikely. Well, guess what happened last week? They find Suzanne Morphew's remains 50-ish miles from their house, but not while they were investigating this case, but instead when they were investigating a totally separate and different case. And quotes coming from the prosecutor after finding this, and they were confirmed hers this week, is that, this is still a wild case and we'll see what happens. Not now we've got him. It's over. It's, it's too soon. I think for them to, at least I don't think they've publicly said what the cause of death is. However, I would think, and I've heard some people say, uh, let me get some of these questions. Cause you guys are asking some of these questions. Um, C Chinny, what's her body going to tell them after three years? It's a good question. Cause we have the elements um, we heard about, you know, Brian Laundrie and the, the state he was found in, and it was only, you know, wasn't anywhere near three years. However, it is possible for them to at least see if firearms were at play, because that was one of the big things with him is he had a lot of firearms, avid hunter. Maybe he did something like that. I don't know about tranquilizer um, information that may come out in a toxicology report, but maybe something like that. Uh, I think there are still some things they can find. Now, the three years making it murky might be good for the defense in that they're not going to find enough to connect them. It's just going to be another question mark, which makes it more difficult to prove this case beyond a reasonable doubt. Let's watch a quick video clip of them or of the, the news just kind of explaining how they found her and giving some details about found, finding her remains. And then we'll jump to the rest of the questions. Information about her being found. Um, Melissa J. What's interesting is that the Colorado Bureau of Investigation was looking into something else and they found her remains. What were they looking for? Could it end up being connected? Great question. What led them to that area? 
Was it cross-sectioning somebody else's phone and car in a different investigation? Oh, also bringing up the uh, CBI, Colorado Bureau of Investigations, one of the witnesses involved in this case resigned amidst allegations of all sorts of wrongdoing over his career. That absolutely, and that's happened in our cases too. And actually that has been the reason one of our federal criminal cases, because an FBI agent did a similar thing, was dismissed in the past. So just that alone. And Max Sauce asks a good follow-up question. Does that mean fruit of the poisonous tree? Because the prosecution has a discovery violation. Sorry if that's a dumb question. So it's not fruit of the poisonous tree in that if somebody's constitutional rights were violated, then you can't use the evidence. However, they can, the judge can strike certain evidence if you don't discover it. If you don't turn it over to the other, and we've had that happen in trials before too, where they try to enter something in the middle of trial. We're like, judge, they never turn this over to us and discovering the judge is like, then that's out. Again, especially in federal court, they're even more of a stickler in there. So if you don't discover it appropriately, it can be struck. But usually you can fix everything by discovering it before trial. And in this case, they're going to be able to redo discovery all over again. However, Kayla brings up a good point. Are the witnesses that the judge strikes still off the table? The answer to this is most likely yes. I'd have to go through the reasoning why each witness was struck to make sure of this. But generally speaking, like the uh, CBI agent that resigned, yeah, he's still going to be out. For anybody else that has wrongdoing or that the state um, did not appropriately handle throughout that process could still be struck. Now, if the state fixes it with proper discovery and proper notice, if they're an expert witness and things like that, then maybe the judge will allow them to. However, judges are not too keen on allowing the state to fix all their mistakes just by filing a null pros or dismissing the charges without prejudice and then refiling them a year later to fix all the problems they had with their first case. So I would, if I was the state attorney, that's not what I'd be looking for. But what I would be looking for going into the future is any connections I can make because of the body, the location, the cause of death, DNA, whatever it may be. If I can make those connections to Barry, then I think they have a really good chance of bringing this case again piling on the other negative evidence they already have, but having real solid, hard proof that it was him, then it might be better to file charges. But if it's just more question marks, I don't see them refiling these charges. Cheryl, I have not seen a cause of death reported yet. Net woman. Notice how he speaks about her in past tense. That is correct. That is correct. And again, that could be indicative of something or it's been three years and somebody's missing. All the research shows it's highly unlikely that they're going to turn up again. Uh, Nirvana. She was a beautiful woman with secrets. It happens. I think this is probably Barry. I believe in one of his many interviews said so much as this, that he thinks it has to do with how attractive she is and, you know, an affair he didn't know about. And maybe that had something to do with it. So I think that is something the defense was probably trying to use. Uh, Sassanac. They were looking for missing woman, Edna Quintana. Okay. I don't know anything about that case, but makes sense. Girl Scout, why isn't Peter covering Maya? So I've done some videos on it. Honestly, I have not had that many questions or interest on it from the channel, number one. Number two, there are some issues with me diving too deep into it um, and things I can't discuss publicly that I know about some of the things involved in the case. Not, I'm not at all involved in the Take Care of Maya case or anything like that. Uh, but there are just some things I think that would keep me from being fully dived in like I or dove in, whatever that word is. Um, like I do in most cases and, and that I like to, to pull the curtain back for you guys hundred percent. So there are some competing factors there with Maya, but we'll continue to discuss it at least, um, generally as we continue forward. Alley cat three years, isn't that long. They can use bone marrow, uh, to test for drugs and other substances, as well as some blood test markers that tell you indications of suffocation, wounds, organ failure, et cetera. Bones have lots of info. Thank you, Alley cat for that. Additionally, technology continues to advance literally every single day. So modern day technology, we'll see what they can find. I hope they can find all sorts of things. JPL, Suzanne was screaming from below to be found so she could have her justice against Bear Bear. God made this happen. Is Bear Bear, I assume, referencing Barry, her husband. Rebecca Fine and the other new members that joined. We are planning a very cool October members only live. Um, coming in just a few days or weeks. So join if you want to be in on that. Um, yeah, somebody said 50 miles, not 50 yards. Correct. Yeah, I believe it was 50 miles. Um, 
Okay, let's see what else we got here. I've got about two more minutes for questions. So yes, Angela, DNA was found in her car, but it wasn't of Barry or her person she was having an affair with. Instead, it was somebody that's connected to other crimes of a similar nature in other jurisdictions. Did they know each other? Were they friends? How did it get in there? We don't know, but that would be a huge piece of forensic evidence for the defense if and when this case goes to trial. All right. So after this video, I am going to answer a couple more questions, but after this video, turn on whatever you got to turn on to get redirected because we're going to premiere a video I recorded about breaking down Ben Chu's comments on eight passengers. And spoiler alert, there are a couple things I disagree with, with Ben Chu. I still love Ben Chu, respect and think he's awesome, but I think it does make for some interesting conversation. And I want to know where you guys stand in the chat. So make sure you stick around for this, for that video coming right after this one. Um, Thank you, Azam. Olive said the clothing can be tested too. Saint B said it's not impossible for him to have sent the DNA offender to her. What's Barry's background? That's I guess that's possible. But it doesn't seem like the state wanted to investigate that angle, which I think is interesting. Alicia, do we know what personal items were found? I don't know what personal items were found besides her helmet. I know that. Oh, you mean like where with her remains? I don't know. Um. So Christy and a couple people have asked about saying the M word. Yeah, there are lots of words that get flagged on YouTube that are of a violent nature and things like that. So I just try to stay away from them. Sussex, yes, I have, and it's coming up here in about five minutes. So this is a good point. There were accusations that she was, you know, potentially taking pills or drinking a lot, and maybe he was her dealer of some sort. I mean, there's a lot of different, a lot of different theories, and the point is you got to have more than theories if you're the prosecutor. You have to have more than theories. If you're a prosecutor, ooh, Lara said there was never even a bike ride. That's interesting because where her helmet was found was a big deal. And he turned his car the way her helmet was found, apparently. It's wild. It's wild. Tammy, yeah, maybe we'll do a recap after that Maya case is over. All right. So. Almost 5,000 people on here. Hit that like button if you haven't already. And if you're new from this case, let me know because you hear some people asking about Maya. Um, there's some difficulties there, so I can't really dive too much into it. But if you want to hear about this case, let me know by subscribing to our channel and let me know that you found us through our, I'm sorry, through this case and this video and hit the like button. And if there's enough interest, we will continue to follow up on what's going on here. Yeah, there is a whole lot of evidence against him. Absolutely. But a lot of it's circumstantial. And I think there are some arguments the defense could make. And eventually the state even agreed they didn't have, um, they didn't have enough evidence to go forward. Yes. Nirvana, at least she can rest in peace. And, um, the family, whatever you think about them, uh, it is some kind of closure. At least the premiere is set to tomorrow. Kaylee said, so John, would you take a second and fix that? Before we sign off of this, I'm glad I didn't sign off yet, Kaylee. You're a lifesaver. Member of the day here. John, why don't you... And Yes, Kaylee, I see. Thank you. John, will you please fix that and let me know when it's done? I'll answer a few more questions here before we redirect. Deb N said, new to this case, would love to hear more. Looking forward to hearing your thoughts on Maya when you're able to share. It's a heartbreaking case for sure. It absolutely is. Ben Chu is Johnny Depp's lawyer. They interviewed him about um, the eight passengers, uh, Ruby Frankie case. She's like a YouTube mom who like put all of that stuff out on YouTube. And then she's been arrested for child abuse and charged with child abuse now. And everybody was like, oh, you got to watch this Ben Chu interview. You got to watch this Ben Chu interview and let us know what you think. I didn't think that people would enjoy that as much as they do and they do enjoy it. So I did it. And that's kind of how this channel works. If you're new to the channel, um, if people ask for it and it, I can add some value to whatever the video is and you guys can learn from it and you guys can enjoy watching it, then I'll do it usually for the most part, as long as there's a legal angle. Um, 
and we can, you know, go from there. Sarcastic one says it's fixed. Is that sarcastic? Can I believe that or is it sarcastic? <laughs> All right. Now it is set for today, 928. Thank you, John. All right. So that means we can go here. Thank you, everybody that joined. Don't forget to hit the like button on the way out. And as soon as you get to the other video, hit the like button. Let me know what you think of it in the comments, okay? I might pop over there and uh, be in the live chat with you. That's all we've got for this episode. Until next time, I'm out of here. Thanks for watching another episode of The Lawyer You Know. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit the thumbs up and share with your friends who might be interested here on YouTube. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. You can also follow us on all social media, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, at Lawyer You Know. But on Instagram, we are still at Tragos Law. So look us up on there. And don't forget to listen to The Lawyer You Know podcast, available on all major podcast platforms. If you have a case you want to talk to us about, if it's a personal injury case, wrongful death, catastrophic injury, car accident, or slip and fall case, please email us lawyer, you know, at gmail.com. Of course, all of these links I just mentioned are included in the description below on this episode and every episode. So until next time, this is Peter Tragos, the lawyer, you know.